10 fertilizer myths that will save you money. I guarantee it. Fertilizers are very misunderstood by gardeners, and manufacturers of products take advantage of that. They sell you things you don't really need. Now, you buy these products, you put them on your soil, and things grow. And so you assume, hey, that worked. But you don't know it worked unless you did a proper control. And I know most of you don't do controls. Without them, you don't actually know the product worked. I grow over 3,000 different plants. Most of them grow quite well. I don't use any of these products. And I'll discuss that in more detail at the end of this video. I'm going to try to go through these topics fairly quickly, but I do want you to understand them. But if you want more detail, I've written articles on many of these topics, and I'll put links to those in the description below. Let me clarify the word fertilizer. When I use the term, I'm including both synthetic and organic fertilizer. If I want to be more specific, I'll call it synthetic fertilizer or organic fertilizer. Plant-specific fertilizer. I think this is the largest myth in gardening, that there's such a thing as specific formulations for a particular type of plant. By plant-specific, I'm talking about things like rose fertilizer, orchid fertilizer, tomato fertilizer, African violet fertilizer, and so on. None of these products actually exist, except in the minds of marketing people and in the minds of those customers that have been convinced to buy those products. And you can demonstrate this for yourself very easily, and I've done this for you here. Let's have a look at rose fertilizer. So I've gone to Google and searched for images of rose fertilizer products, and I've made a collage of the ones I found. These are all specific plant fertilizers for roses. They're all made by experts who know what roses need. So let's have a look at these. In the top left-hand corner is a fertilizer that has a formulation of 6-12-16, nitrogen, phosphate, and potassium. That last number is the potassium, 16. That tells me that this manufacturer believed roses need a lot of potassium. Now let's look at the bottom right corner. This formulation is a 4-6-2. Oh, this manufacturer believes that roses need very little potassium, but they need a lot more phosphate. The one in the middle is a 14, 12, 11. That's almost a balanced formula, equal amounts of each of those nutrients. So this manufacturer is saying, hey, you just need equal amounts of everything. And in fact, if you look at each one of these, every one has a different formulation. And yet, they're all experts in producing rose fertilizer. How can they all be perfect for roses when they're all different? Well, they simply can't be. At most, one is right and the others are wrong. But even that one is wrong, and I'll explain that in a second. There is no such thing as plant-specific fertilizer. Most plants take in nutrients in the ratio of 3, 1, 2. More nitrogen very small amount of phosphate, and some potassium. If you get a fertilizer with that ratio, you can feed everything with it. But that leads me into myth number two. The idea that we feed plants is a myth. Plants aren't like people where we spoon feed food into them. Plants use their roots to collect the nutrients that they need. We don't feed plants. What we do is we replace the missing nutrients in soil. If soil has all the nutrients plants need, we don't have to add any fertilizer. If soil is deficient, say in nitrogen, we have to add nitrogen. We don't have to add the other nutrients. If a soil is deficient in potassium, we have to add potassium, but we don't have to add nitrogen or phosphate or anything else. We should add the nutrients that soil is missing when we fertilize. Now that may seem like semantics to you, but if you spend a little time thinking about it, you'll realize how important this concept is. What it means is that none of the manufactured fertilizers out there are correct. It also means that nobody online can tell you what fertilizer you should use in your garden because none of them know what your soil is missing. Your job as a gardener is to add the nutrients that are missing in soil. Myth number three, Epsom salts. 
This one is so common online and in books and videos. Everybody is telling you you need Epsom salts. It's a great fertilizer. Well, if you have a look at the package, it tells you what's in it. Magnesium and sulfate. Sulfate is the ionic form of sulfur that plants use. So it's adding magnesium and sulfur. Well, as it turns out, most soil has lots of magnesium, so it doesn't need any more. And in fact, most soil has enough sulfur too. Plants only need a very small amount of sulfur. In that case, magnesium sulfate does nothing for your soil. Now, if you're deficient in magnesium or sulfur, then it will help plants grow. But if you need either one of those nutrients, there are much better options. For instance, if you're deficient in sulfur, use agricultural sulfur. It's much less expensive. I haven't found a single reason to use Epsom salts in the garden. Myth four, bloom boosters and bone meal. The claim for both of these products is that they will give you more flowers, and that's completely wrong. These products contain a lot of phosphate, that middle number. And the belief is that phosphate makes plants make more flowers. And that's just simply not true. If you look at the basic biochemistry of plants, every cell in the plant needs about the same nutrient. Roots, leaves, stems, flowers, fruits, they all have about the same amount of phosphate, same amount of nitrogen, same amount of potassium. Adding extra phosphate will not make more flowers. And there's lots of research to show that, but for some reason, gardeners still believe it. The other issue we have is that phosphate is starting to accumulate in soils. People are using too much of it. And if they do that, then you get runoff. That goes into rivers and lakes and we get algae bloom problems. So using too much phosphate actually hurts the environment. Now there's another thing about phosphate and that's how it moves through the soil profile. But I'll discuss that in a separate video that I'll link to at the end of this one. For now, the message is don't add more phosphate to your soil unless you're deficient. And most likely you're not deficient. Myth number five, transplant fertilizers. So these are things that you're supposed to put in the planting hole when you move plants. Most of these have high phosphate, and it's claimed that high phosphate grows better roots. Well, just like blooms, this is completely false. All parts of the plants need the same nutrient. Phosphate in the soil will not make better roots. In fact, when you're transplanting things, it's best not to fertilize them at all. These plants will start using the nutrients that are in your soil, and unless you have a specific deficiency, they're going to get lots of nutrients from that soil. So don't put anything into the planting hole. Number six, what are salts and how do they relate to fertilizer? I see a lot of people making the claim that I don't use synthetic fertilizer because it has too many salts in it. And we know salts are bad for plants. Well, that's partially a myth. So let's have a closer look at salts. The term is confusing because it's used in different ways. In our common language, we use salt in place of table salt, and that's sodium chloride. If you live in a cold area that gets a lot of snow, you're also used to spreading salt on the driveway or on the walkway, or the city puts it on the streets to stop the snow from icing up. That is also usually sodium chloride. Now, sodium chloride is toxic to plants, and if you live up north, you'll know that because things that grow right along the road usually get damaged by this salt. Sodium is toxic and will harm plants. However, the proper use of the word salts is to apply it to a whole range of compounds. Things like nitrate, phosphate, potassium, magnesium, calcium. These are all salts and those are the nutrients plants need. Plants can't live without salts. When we add synthetic fertilizer to the soil, it immediately dissolves in water and releases those nutrients. And those nutrients are salts. They're good for plants. Now, you can add too much. You probably know that if you add too much fertilizer to your lawn, it'll go brown and you can kill the roots. 
So too much fertilizer, too much salt is harmful to plants. But in a reasonable amount, it's absolutely necessary for plants to grow. Salt do not harm plants. Now let's have a look at the difference between organic fertilizer and synthetic fertilizer. To understand this, I have to explain a little bit about what happens during the decomposition process. We start out with a banana peel, and that peel has lots of nutrients in there. The problem is, if I give that to a plant, it's absolutely useless for the plant. The banana peel does contain phosphate and nitrogen. The plants can't use them because the nutrients are tied up in large molecules. Protein has a lot of nitrogen. Plants can't use it as long as it's protein. Chlorophyll, the chemical that makes leaves green, contains magnesium and nitrogen. Again, the molecule is too big and plants can't use it. DNA has a lot of phosphate in it. Again, absolutely useless for plants until it decomposes. So when things decompose, these large molecules break down and they become smaller and smaller and smaller until they're released as nutrients. So at the end of that process, we have nitrate, we have phosphate, we have potassium, we have magnesium. Once they're in that form, the plants can use them. While synthetic fertilizer, it decomposes quickly. It dissolves in water and breaks apart immediately. So the nutrients from synthetic fertilizer are immediately available to plants. The ones from organic fertilizer take time before that organic material can break down and release those nutrients. So one of the key differences is how quickly do the nutrients come out of these fertilizers? Now let's have a look at one of these nutrients. I'm going to pick nitrate. So if we compare the nitrate molecule from a banana peel to the nitrate molecule from a synthetic fertilizer, this is what they look like. Can you spot the difference? They're identical. There is no difference. Neither plants, nor humans, or microbes, all of which need nitrates, none of them can tell the difference. And if you send those molecules to a lab, they can't tell the difference either. Once it's a nitrate molecule, it doesn't matter where it came from. From that perspective, there is no difference between organic fertilizer and synthetic fertilizer. They both produce identical nutrients. Myth number eight, salt kills microbes. Well, you probably guessed by now that this is a complete myth. I don't know where this one ever started, but it's wrong. Microbes are really no different than plants. They both need the same nutrients to grow. Nitrate, phosphate, potassium, sulfate, magnesium. Microbes need all those things as well. So how can they be toxic to microbes when they're essential food for microbes? They can't be. Now again, huge amounts of synthetic fertilizer might harm microbes in the same way that it harms plants, but reasonable amounts of synthetic fertilizer will not harm microbes. In fact, when farmers fertilize their fields, what we find is the amount of microbes actually explode suddenly because there's excess food there. And then once the nutrients are used up, the population crashes back down. So what is the real difference between organic fertilizer and synthetic fertilizer? Well, they produce the same nutrients. That part makes them the same. But there are two vital differences. Remember I told you that organic material are these large molecules that slowly have to decompose smaller and smaller before the nutrients are released? Well, that takes a lot of time. And in fact, when you put compost on your soil, it takes about five years for this process to happen completely. During that time, a small amount of nutrients are released on a daily basis. So organic fertilizer is a very slow feed. Synthetic happens right away and is a fast feed. That's a huge difference between the two. Now, sometimes you need a fast feed, like in a container or a house plant. Maybe even in the vegetable garden, if you've got a short growing season, you have to get those plants to really grow fast. In the rest of the garden, though, you don't need a fast feed. You want a slow, steady feed to grow really good plants. The other difference between the two is that organic fertilizer contains carbon. And that carbon is critical for building good soil structure. Synthetic fertilizer 
adds no carbon. So organic fertilizer is better, but synthetic has a place. Myth number 10, foliar feeding. Now does this work and should you be doing it? Well, it does work. So when we spread fertilizer on the leaves, there are small pores in the leaves that absorb those nutrients. So nutrients will get into the plant quicker that way. But there are a couple of limitations. The first one is the plant can only absorb very small amounts of nutrients. So for the macronutrients, the nitrogen, phosphate, potassium, calcium, magnesium, and so on, it's not a very efficient way of feeding the plant. It is good if your plant has a deficiency, say an iron deficiency, and you need to give it a real quick boost and you want that iron to get in the leaves quickly. That does work, but it's not a good long-term solution. The other problem you have is that some of these nutrients move around the plant easily, others don't. So when we put calcium on the leaf as a foliar spray, it does go into that leaf, but it won't leave the leaf. A lot of people will spray their tomato plants with calcium thinking that they can cure blossom end rot in the fruit. That doesn't work because the plant can't move the calcium from the leaf to the fruit. Besides, blossom end rot has nothing to do with calcium. That's another myth. It's a watering issue. If you want more details on that, have a look at my video on blossom end rot. So foliar feeding does work. It's great in agriculture for specific problems. It's something the average gardener should stay away from. So here's a bonus for you. Number 11, do you need to fertilize? Well, I mentioned at the beginning of the program that I have 3,000 different plants and I fertilize virtually nothing. I don't put fertilizer in when I plant and I don't fertilize years later. Now, there are some exceptions. Containers get fertilized because we water them a lot and we wash the nutrients out the bottom. So they do need regular fertilizer. I also fertilize my vegetable bed a little bit. We have a very short growing season. I need those plants to grow quickly and give me a crop before the snow flies. So sometimes I do fertilize those. But the rest of the garden never gets fertilized. And I find things just grow fine. And the main reason is that the purpose of fertilizing is to replace the nutrients that are missing. I guess my soil isn't missing anything because stuff grows in it. And if that's the case, you don't need to add fertilizer. Now, a little bit of compost once in a while does wonders, but forget the fertilizer. Only fertilize when you know you have a deficiency. If you like this video, I have two others that are related to this topic. The first one is, how do you select the right fertilizer when you need it? And I'll put a link to that in the top right-hand corner. The second one is that a lot of people like to use things from their kitchen to fertilize their plants. Things like the, the water from boiling vegetables and say the water from eggs and beer and old cold coffee and the list goes on. And I made a video that looks at about 10 different things that people use from their kitchen to fertilize their house plants. And I'll put a link to that in the bottom corner. I hope I've saved you some money.